have some daylight left today. I know it doesn't really look like it. <laughs> so it's a little darker than normal, but there's sunlight on me. So we're calling this, I have light left in the day. So today's video, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a houseplant tour and with every single houseplant that I introduce, that I talk about today, I'm going to give you their magical associations. And this is gonna be both like my personal associations with the plant as well as what I can find online. I think there are two plants that I, three plants that I have that I excluded. I mean, that is my Peperomia, my Verde Peperomia, my Jade plant and my Spider plant because my spider plant is upstairs. But I have a lot of plants. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, seventeen. I don't know how I got there. Sixteen plants. Plus I'm propagating like a lot. Um, so I recently, I've been recently acquiring houseplants as something that I am very interested in. Um, and when I found out that houseplants also have magical associations, my life was changed. Life changed. All right, so we're gonna start off. This is a baby. This is Pothos. Pothos is one of my favorite house plants. I have two of them, and I am trying to propagate one of them. Pothos, philodendron, and marantas are kind of my top ones. <laughs> um, I love them. I want so many. Um, but Pothos is known for many things. I believe it is discussed in Juliet Diaz's plant witchery. When I talk about Pothos, I am talking about, there's a lot, well, firstly, there's a lot of associations that I have with Pothos. I have personal associations with the plant in regards to protection and growth. Because Pothos is so fast growing and it roots so easily and it's just like kind of chill, I have always kind of seen it as a plant of growth. The associations that I could find online, um, Pothos aka Devil's Ivy has a lot of associations with protection, fast growth, resilience, binding, and banishment. How I tend to use this house plant completely depends on the vibe of the pothos. So with my silver vine pothos, I just got her. She was a gift from one of my friends on TikTok and I'm not quite ready to use her in any spell work yet. I have tried to use my Android pothos in spell work before, but because the pothos that I have is kind of a representation of both me and my partner's relationship, we both got a plant together. Um, when we started dating and he got a golden pothos and I got a golden, uh, an android pothos and we are gonna see the growth of our relationship through the plants. Because of that, I tend to leave it because for me it's a symbol of our relationship, but I have in the past tried to use it in a kind of growth slash uncrossing spell. I also am a big fan of using ivy for that purpose. And now I will introduce you to my ivy plant. This is Ivy. So I'm not, are there fungus gnats in here? I'm literally gonna kill someone. I did a wash for her, so I think she's fine. But this is my Ivy. Um, I've heard like completely different takes on how to deal with pests. Some people say that you should just learn to live with them. I know. Yeah, she hangs up on my like window area and drapes. She's a draper. So that was my ivy. It is not English ivy, she is California ivy. My personal associations with ivy are very similar to Pothos because of the rate at which she grows. I have like, you know, uh, binding. I've used her in bindings. I've used her in t spells where I want to tangle someone up binding basically. Fertility and financial situations, I've used her in a lot of, as much as binding, unbinding spells, as well as growth. Um, when you look online for IVs associations, you'll see a lot of like healing, protection, unbinding and uncrossing, road opening, fast growth, fertility, fidelity, and love. I think IV is one of the houseplants I have that has a lot of associations attributed to it. It's probably because it, you know, 
we have record of it. I don't know. Um, and this, so Hadira Helix is the Latin name for ivy. I believe that is the English ivy, not the California ivy. Ivy is also um, feature in Plant Witchery by Juliet Diaz. So I typically sit here because she grows so fast, it's very easily for her, easy for her to like stick on things, tangle things up. I love using her in protection workings to kind of trap someone if they try to harm me. I love using her um, to help grow a business. I love using her for protection and for unbindings and uncrossings. She's one of my most used plants in my spells, probably because she she's so big. She's so big, she grows so fast. And because of that, it's easy to just take a branch off her because she's so healthy. And I have correlated her with certain spells, like a money spell, like a protection spell, and watch the plant to see how she's doing, um, which is why I was so concerned about the fungus gnats. I'm like, mm -hmm, that's a problem. I definitely did a protection spell with her and then I hid the protection spell away somewhere. Don't know where it is, I'll find it in like a year. Moving on. This is my aloe vera, this is aloe vera. This is my aloe vera. Um, she's my oldest plant next to my spider plant. Um, I did take her little stake that was holding her up today because I wanted her to try getting used to growing on her own. She kind of tilts a little bit. She also only grows in this direction, which I don't totally understand. She has a new, new baby coming out. Um, so like I said, aloe, probably one of my other most used plants. Aloe vera is my protection, my plant ward, my protection plant. Um, and aloe's associations are typically with healing and protection. If you aren't aware, aloe vera, you know, is really great for treating sunburn, skin conditions, anything like that. I use um, aloe vera not only as a house ward, but as an herbal ally to help me whenever my face breaks out, um, <laughs> or with sunburn. So I've definitely used her for both healing and protection works. And as a, a house ward, as a plant ward, she, <laughs> she's the best. She's the best. She's so, she is so tough. Like she's been a ward since she was a baby and she has thrived. How do I take care of my aloe vera plant? I ignore it. I ignore her and let her do her thing. She will let me know if she needs something. That method has worked so far. Moving on to kind of more plants that I have gotten recently. Um, I will talk about my, I'm gonna flip up and do begonia. So this is, this is my begonia. I have a begonia maculata, which is like a cane variety of begonia. So you can see a little leaf here. She's got some new growth here. Lots of little stick outs. She does have her this. These are her new leaves. She has two new leaves and two very damaged sunburnt leaves. So that is my begonia. What? Okay, I'm gonna move back because now, can I move like forward more? Mm -hmm. This, this works, I guess. I love my begonia. She had a rough time when she came to me. And what I mean by that is I picked her up. Well, actually my, my boyfriend picked her up as a present for me and she came out and was like all her leaves, like at least, I think she had maybe like, I wanna say six leaves, maybe more. Upwards of six leaves and now she has four. So maybe eight leaves about half of them were covered with powdery mildew, which I treated that night and then did not realize how severely begonias got sunburnt and put her in a spot that I thought didn't get any sun, but it actually did and didn't understand why she was not doing well. So she's been in a recovery period <laughs> for about two months now. She's doing better. She has two new leaves, lots of new growth, uh, but she definitely is like looking sparse. Um, so I have to wait for a while to see this kind of growth come to fruition. They say new growth takes six weeks, but that's like six weeks for sprouts. And then you wait for the leaves to mature, which is another like, I don't even know how long. I've had these leaves here, these little baby leaves for like at least a month and they haven't changed. So yeah. Begonias, what I could find is they are associated with balance, awareness, psychic abilities, individuality, harmony, fortitude, and healing wounds. Someone said that begonias are a great gift because they um, allow for inner strength to shine through. My personal association with begonias is 
if you really, <laughs> I honestly think they could be used in a spell to give someone a hard time because they are just like, not high maintenance, but there's so many little things that you need to be aware of before you get one and before you start taking care of them. Like powdery mildew is a big thing. They will get sunburn if you put them in the sun. Like I put her in like low light and she does great, which is interesting because a lot of websites list begonias as a indirect light group, which I thought was very interesting. I was like, really indirect sunlight because I, she does great in a dark corner right and she loves the shade because of that loving of the shade i also see her as representation of what we can grow when we look at the darker aspects of ourselves and our shadow works and our dark corners what beauty can be found there those are my personal associations like i said she's a newer plant i'm still working with her then i have my new baby this is a monstera Silver, silver Monstera. She's in a Starbucks cup. Silver Monstera, or just Monstera in general, was a plant that I had a lot of difficulty finding associations for. The associations I did found were within Chinese symbolism, and that was respect and loving elders. I also saw some a website say that they were good for scaring men um, and suffocation, which I I wasn't sure if the site was repeatable. It was like, they get really big, they're good for scaring men. And I'm like, okay. So my my Monstera is a silver Monstera, not a Monstera Deliciosa or Adonansi, Adonsoni. So it'll be more of an epa of a trailing boy. Um, and because I just got her, I'm still getting to know her. I'm still making my own personal associations with her. So I'll keep you guys updated. So this one is Creeping Fig. Oh, my fig is kind of in a rough condition at the moment because I forgot to water it. So this is my creeping fig. We got a lot of creeping boys, <laughs> like dead, dead things. Um, so, so, ow. Fig, like I think it's the fiddle leaf fig that is associated with abundance, fertility, and luck. It may be the creeping fig too, it just said fig and then it said fiddly fig. And I was like, what? Um, so this, the creeping or crawling fig, I can see her as being associated with abundance, fertility, and luck. I use my <laughs> creeping fig as a devotional plant to my, to work to Hades uh, slash Pluton, who I worship. It's very good at telling me when it needs something. I'll be, I'll, uh, I'll give it that. <laughs> it just usually kills off like half of its leaves when it needs something. <laughs> I have before my personal, personal associations. Right now this plant is mostly just a like gateway, a messenger between me and Hades slash Pluton, like telling me what it needs, telling me what he needs. Like he wants some water, good, I'll water the plant. That kind of stuff. So it's, it's a process, all right? It's a process. Ooh, all right, now we're getting up to my favorites. These are my three favorite plants next to Pothos. So we're gonna start with Philodendron. I have two philodendrons, actually three. So this is my philodendron cordaton. This is my best growing one so far. Very pretty. This is a new one that I got from the same friend who gave me the monstera. That is my philodendron silver sword. She's looking a little beat up because of the travel, but to be fair, she has two new like little stems here. Um, and one more, it looks like maybe coming in. So I'm not particularly worried about her. It looks like she's bouncing back. And then this is my, one of my pride and joys. My philodendron Mikan. So she has, I clipped this end here cause it was growing like insanely fast. I'm trying to propagate it. This is her. She has like a lot of new growth, a lot of new leaves. She isn't as like lush and full as I've seen other Mikans be, but I'm, you know, I'm giving it time. I'm giving her time to do what she needs to do. So my philodendron might get. I also am trying to propagate an end of her. So philodendrons are some of my favorites. I get along really well with them. Whenever I get a philodendron, it tends to do very well in my care. And that's been the case with the cordatum. I think it's referred to as a heartly philodendron, 
uh, philodendron mycin and the philodendron silver sword, even though it kind of had a rough transport, seems to be doing a lot better. So philodendrons, we have, you know, growth, stability, versatility, and abundance associated with them, which makes a lot of sense because they are in my opinion, pretty low maintenance plants. And it may just be because I get along well with them. <laughs> um, they are fast growing, they are resilient, definitely very versatile because of their ability to shift from low light to high light and do well in a variety of light conditions. My personal associations with them include abundance and growth. Um, I always pin the vibe of my philodendrons as like an herb or a plant spirit as very, almost inquisitive. Inquisitive and very loving are my two kind of terms. I love philodendrons. I think that there's a level to them and like each different one has a different vibe. So the philodendron mycin, I love big thing. Heartleaf or cordatum, very much inquisitive. Philodendron silver sword feels a little bit shyer, but it's gonna take time. But philodendrons are definitely some of my favorites. I don't use any of them in my spells, partially because I want the mycin to grow and I want to have another mycin. I focus a lot on the propagation of them. I'm also trying to propagate my other philodendron um, because I want to uh, like get enough so that I can use them in my spells in my witch practice. But right now I care for them and love them so much that it's really hard for me to do that. Up next we have ferns, ferns. I have one fern as of this moment. And that is my crocodile fern. She is a baby. This is her. She's got so many leaves. She's really filling out, which I love. Um, when I got her, you know, she was taking a while. But so they're called crocodile ferns for their little fern-ish, like crocodile skin texture. So crocodile fern. Crocodile fern is the only fern that I have right now. Um, but ferns have long time been a favorite plant of mine. We used to have lady ferns all around where I grew up at my old house in Pennsylvania. My mom has resurrected a fern plant from the dead before, which is crazy. Another story for another time. So ferns, um, fun fact about them, I believe they were the first things to grow back after the dinosaurs were wiped out. I have personal associations with them with strength, resilience, and wisdom. All plants are ancient beings, but ferns are like very ancient. So when I imagine the spirit of my crocodile fern, I see an old man. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but like an old man is the vibe of ferns. Some ferns are like old ladies. Crocodile fern is an old man to me. They also have associations with calm, groundedness, protection, and good luck. For me, protection, strength, wisdom is the biggest thing. If I want to discover a secret to the universe, I'm going to talk to my fern. That's going to be the vibe. That is what I'm going to do. This is the final plant. Ooh. That is prayer plant. So my prayer plant, one of them, I have many. This one is a Maranta. You can see a little baby leaf. She just had a new leaf come in right here. She has another one coming there and another one more down here. So this prayer plant's doing very well. And then this is my other prayer plant. My Maranta had a rough time recently. So this is my red one. It has three leaves <laughs> as of right now. Prayer plants are some of my favorites right next to philodendron, pothos, and ferns. Um, I want to have many of them. I have one, two, three, four prior plant stems that I'm trying to propagate right now. Hopefully I'll end up with another prior plant. Um, so prayer plant can refer to two like types. There is Calathea and there is Maranta. I only have Marantas because I had a Calathea once and I killed it. So I love Marantas, Calatheas I'm iffy on. I will try again with one more Calathea and we'll see how it goes. Calathea has association with balance, clarity, and duality. And Maranta has a lot of associations with prayers of gratitude, remind us of what we need to be thankful for in abundance. For me, my associations with her are divination, communication. Um, she is very much a messenger between me and the divine, especially my red velvet, my red Maranta. Helping the divine carry your prayers is the vibe of my Marantas. A lot of people say that 
marantas are prayer plants and I calatheas I understand but marantas are prayer plants are very difficult to take care of marantas are one of the plants that I have that when I get them it's very easy for them to do well in my care similar to philodendron um, the issue I had with my red prior plant is that she had a very bad fungus gnat infestation. I use miracle Grow soil. Everybody criticized me now. I use miracle Grow. So I did a, I did multiple things for her with this fungus gnat infestation. The first thing I did was set up a trap for them, which I still have. I still have a fungus gnat trap. The second thing I did was water the, add cinnamon to the soil, which I did multiple times and it didn't help. The third thing I did was um, water all of the plant with a solution of hydrogen peroxide 3%, like maybe a third in water. And that was like a complete soaking of the soil. And uh, the next day, or a couple days later, the fungus gnats were still back. Like, completely back. So I had tried, I think people, a lot of people were giving me a really good message. They're like, try cinnamon, try this, try that. And I'm like, oh, I did everything. And they would, didn't go away. Um, so what ended up happening is I had to take her out of her pot. She was doing very, very well. Like two, I, so many leaves, so much new growth, like doing so well. So I had to take her out of her pot completely, get rid of all the soil, do a soaking of her and her roots in that uh, hydrogen peroxide and water solution, um, and then wash the pot down, and then put her back in. Get like with completely new soil. So what ended up happening and what I realized I did wrong now, because this was my first time dealing with a fungus gnat infestation, is I went very hardcore on rinsing her, her roots and getting all the soil off. I did not need to do that. I could have just popped her into the solution and then moved her, um, especially with brand new soil. But I went a little too hard in getting all the soil off and I damaged her roots in one section. Um, so she used to have like, she has three leaves now. She used to have a completely other like arm over here with like four to six leaves. I had to completely get rid of that because they all died. <laughs> it's very emotional. And the other part of it was I had dropped her. As I was getting ready to take care of her with the fungus gnats, I dropped her and severed her other arm. So I broke that arm off and now I am attempting to propagate it. It's, you know, could be worse. It is curling up a little, which probably means I need some more water in here. Um, but yeah, so that's the story of the problem with my red velvet. And it was really upsetting for me because she was, was, is one of my favorite plants. When I want to connect with her, I will clean her leaves and recite a Hail Mary. I keep her on my altar. I sit with her and pray with her whole nine yards. So it was distressing for me um, because I, so much damage came to her in a short amount of time. Um, but she still has three leaves left. And I know she will bounce back and regrow. Um, I've been giving her lots of attention. I have been making sure she gets everything she needs. The marantas are tropical plants, so humidity is really big for them and indirect sunlight because it filters through the canopy. However, with my red prayer plant, I found that she likes, her specifically likes direct sunlight. I don't know why everyone tells me you shouldn't be giving them direct sunlight and every website says that, but I had her and direct sunlight for ages and then I moved her because I was like, I don't know, maybe this isn't the right thing. And then to let me know that something was wrong, she, like she did, I forget what she did. I think she dropped a leaf or something. I was, it, it, there was something happening with her. I don't know if it was it, as dramatic as dropping a leaf, but she did let me know that she wanted to be moved back to her other spot. I went back to the other spot and the problem that she had presented itself resolved itself. She also, one of my favorite things about prayer plants is they are very communicative. They let me know when they need something or when something's wrong. My red prayer plant had developed two yellowing leaves in a course of like two weeks and I couldn't figure out why her leaves were yellowing and then I figured out she had a fungus gnat infestation. She was telling me and I wasn't listening, all right? Similarly, 
if I see a lot of new growth, I know they're doing well, they're thriving in their habitat. If I see, you know, yellowing leaves, leaves that are curling, I know that I need to do something, all of that. I've always loved them because they're so communicative and so cool. Similar to philodendrons, also really good at letting me know when they need something. Um, but yeah, those are all my houseplants. I do have two propagations going, one in Lekka, which is lightweight expanded clay aggregate. Sally, double check on that. Um, and the other one's in sphagnum moss and charcoal. So I'm having a really great time. I'll let you know which propagation do, does better. Um, I also have a spider plant upstairs and a few other propagations in sphagnum, but the spider plant was just propagated in water. I attempted to do a water only propagation with some prayer plant leaves and I did not have any success, which is why I moved to the LECA. And so, while they haven't rooted yet, these LECA branches and leaves are now praying again, whereas when they were in just water, they didn't pray at all. So, LECA seems to be a good option. If I need to, I'll do another, another prayer plant, but right now I have two. Lots of plants. I'm also, you know, propagating. It's my propagation time. It's the time when I'm like, you know what would be good right now? You know what's a good choice? Propagating everything. So that's what I'm doing right now. If you would like me to do more videos on plant allies, herbal allies, like herbs that you can get from the kitchen, I mean the grocery store, uh, kitchen magic, etc., anything to do with my plants and my house plants, let me know. Um, I would love to make more videos. Do you have a house plant that you involve in all of your witchcraft endeavors or you use in spell work? Let me know in the comments below. Apart from that, you can like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell on, but absolutely no pressure. Remember to drink water and have a great rest of your day. Saba Navika.